right, welcome back here. Call the Audible on Mocon. Hello. Simon. I'm peace. I'm fully dressed. <laughs> Come by, Eagle. Terry Tam. Almost off, fully dressed. Off camera, future Hall of Famer. You know right. say hello in Greek or something? Elatikanish mala. Let's well, so dive into Div uh, 2 playoffs. Oh, hey, don't talk about my mom that way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, Div 2 playoffs, guys, quickly here. Wait, 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 wait. Let's, uh... wait, 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 wait. What are we doing? Mo's going to list off the games and we're going to review them. Which games? Div, Div 2 playoffs, two. bro. Div 2. Awesome. Did you want me to do it or are you going to do it? You go for it. All right, cool. Zero upsets, by the way. Clockmakers, King's Landing. I was there. All right, tell us. Sean fucking blew it. <laughs> I love the guy, and he's played great all year, but it was just a bad game. Just to, just to give you the story of how the game went. First play, he sent a corner to Van Ram, wide open, overthrew by 10 yards. Fine, first play of the okay, game. It happens. It's okay, it happens, right? Second play, overthrew Sander down the middle, tipped, landing made the best catch I've ever seen in my life, and then just kept on going from there. Prince got a pick six to make it 12-6 for clockmakers, and then they just can never but score. Prince Oh, sorry. Okay, my bad. Yeah. yeah. So sorry. they scored. It was twelve six at that point. Okay. Right, and then right. Kings Landing could just never score. He was forcing everything. To the, he threw so many incompletions. I think he had thirty percent completion rate. He had only eight completions this game. Out of twenty four, I think. Right. Thirty two percent. If you look, I actually predicted as I'm watching, yeah. I'm like, he's for sure but under thirty percent. If you look at his last playoff game, spring season twenty eighteen. Uh, if you look it up, uh, Mr. Eagle. I love how you. Oh, I got it. I got you it. predicted a thing that already happened. <laughs> Me? Yeah, you're like I predicted he was under thirty percent at the game that I was watching after the game happened. No, but I wasn't counting. <laughs> no, it was just, it's a weird way to frame well, it. Like, what, did you, what did you want to check? I predict I'll, I'll this look it up right now um, with Sean Avram in his uh, last playoff game that he had in, at uh, Papineau. Uh, it was against uh, Drop the Mic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Let Same field up here. This was uh, spring 2018. It this was last was, spring. Yeah. Fields cursed. He played with Dad Bods, no? No. It, uh, were they called Dad Bods? Yeah, they yeah, were called Dad Bods, right? Sean Avram had a terrible game. That, that he had a day. terrible first half. The second half, he really came back though, and yeah. they just couldn't. They, they just couldn't finish. So, do you think that this is more on Sean not playing well than Ryan Kastner actually winning this game? Ryan Kastner played really well, but I I think it's because he had a, a cushion all game. If there was a if there was a tighter cushion and Sean was completing completing a lot more passes, then I think it would have changed the game. In King's Landing, I find they were be- they were a better team. They just weren't the better team that day. So Sean Avram against dropped the mic. Four TDs, three INTs. All three INTs in the first half, yeah. by the way. So no he's touchdowns. Had some, yeah, he's right. had some bad there. games. He's had some bad games. I'm not so shocked but, by that. Uh, but Sean, the thing is, Sean, he, he gets in his head right away. Right? I think we all know oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, kudos to Clockmakers because their their defense worked perfectly. They just dropped the two and the four all game because Sean was spreading out Van Dram. He was doing corners, posts, and Marco was just covering him. And Marco played Van Dram extremely well. Uh, you had Lanny down the middle that was just eyeing everything. Pachoni didn't let didn't let anything get past him. Uh, Pachoni had a really nice interception too on a, just a weird route by Steve Sander. So overall, I think that Kings Landing need to change a little bit. But good good on the clock because man, they had a really good game plan for Sean. Yeah, they stumbled into the playoffs. Uh, I saw the controversy game against Nighthawks. Great game. Great game. Uh, Nighthawks deserve better, but uh, they just came up short. Uh, yeah, look, Dan Lazara had a vintage Dan Lazara performance in the first half. He was asleep at the wheel. He he threw. Uh, he had a turnover. Nighthawks had a turnover at the one yard line. Lazara gets the ball turnover back. Turnover interception or it's turnover and downs. Okay. Lazara gets the ball, uh, and his first three possessions, two of them were turnovers. Right. Ooh. I was like, oh my god, this is going to be one of those games here, going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Unfortunately, Lazari picked up, not unfortunate, but unfortunate for the Nighthawks, Lazari picked up the, the flow, and uh, he found his rhythm. He was much more efficient in the second half, uh, made some clutch throws on fourth down, huge on fourth down for this uh, uh, controversial team. A.J. Gomes, unstoppable. Uh, they did not have an answer at all. Rob White's defense did not come up, did not come up big, well, big for listen, this game. Th- there was the thing with Nighthawks is they don't, they'll get one stop. That's, gonna be the- That's usually what it is. It's written in Cherry has to go... Six for six, and his defense gets him one stop. They win the game. That's what they did against STL. Yeah, that's what they needed out of him. They got that stop early because they had they Rich, got stopped. So it was just a break even. Though. Yeah, yeah. He had to go score for sc- they score on every drive. Did not. I want to give you some credit, Simon, for this because Why? you're the only one I think that that actually gave Nighthawks any credit. And the fact that they can score 37 points against controversies. I, mean, I don't think anybody was knocking Nighthawks. It's just no, you were. No, no, you were. You were. I remember. I, no, I mean, listen, Nighthawks like aren't defensively. They're, they're not a Div 2 yeah, team. They're not, they're not offensively. Strong team. They're not as strong as controversies. No, offensively, Rick is facts. a Div 2 quarterback. You know what I mean? So Rick is yeah. a Rick great is a Div 1 quarterback. He's a Div 1 quarterback. Yeah, but, right? you know, but no, one's, no one's disagreeing with that. Yeah, it's exactly. just the team is not as good as, no. as a team that Dan Lazaro's put together. And I think at this point, Dan Lazaro is 
That's one mistake. Better than Rick, Rick That's Nassari. one mistake away from winning, though. But Manos. you know what? Dallas Zara. Because Dallas Zara is the one who made the mistake, and they still won. And they still won. Yeah, that's yeah. true. They, they both pro- made mistakes, but Dallas Zara and AJ Gomes, mm-hmm. he praised on Rick Nassari, saying regard. we didn't realize how great of a quarterback he is, mm-hmm. uh, given the let's call for what it is inferior talent on the field. When Andrew Carruthers gets five touchdowns, <laughs> if, but if you flip it, I don't flip know, the quarterbacks. I love Andrew Carruthers. If, I really think flip, that guy's a good player. If you I really flip do. the quarterbacks, yeah. Dan doesn't score 37 with Nine Hawks. With, the, with that roster? Probably not. But on the flip side, but Dan probably, will score 45 But Dan Lazaro probably slows the game down, so it's not that kind of game either. I think Dan will get frustrated with that roster because they're true. not fast enough and whatever. And they're not used to stuff. Yeah, it's true. But Ritten and Ri- Shiri will put up points with whoever you give him. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why he's so good is he finds a way to use receivers regardless of their ceiling of talent. But at the same time, it's also is not great. He never has the team to yeah. really compete. But he runs a quick offense, quick hooks, lines, hooks, and slants, hooks, hooks and slants. We yes. all know that comment. From of course, Kramer. Matt Young. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Terror squad, prospect squad. Okay, I'll put it to you in this term. Awful. Next game. It was, that's it. I, I can't. Uh, I score kept this game. What are you gonna do? How did How did Terror squad points. only score? How did Terror squad only score nineteen points against? Prospect because Terror squad? squad was bleeping around. That's what they're yeah, doing. They didn't have to play, basically. No. Well, that's why it's also a good defense. Yeah. yeah. The well, defense isn't bad. Yeah. They got some good players across the board. They're able to shut down a few things that Tam Villette was probably trying to do. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they scored zero points. Tam is also super banged up. Eh? His shoulder's uh, fucked. I'm surprised Mary Paraka couldn't get any points on the board against their squad. You know, they, got, they got inside the, the red zone, but he just couldn't c- cash in. And... Uh, for whatever reason, Mario Pareca, as we all know, he likes to fireball those two-yard passes, oh, right? Yeah. And it should be like when, a soft when, he, touch. when he gets mad when the game's close, he like forgets that he can't just throw. Well, Danielle Pierre got pissed. Like he's like, Darts, bro, man. like don't fireball those b- f- f- passes. Just, just so underhand it to me. I'm right here. It's too late to get pissed at this point. Like week eleven. Yeah, yeah, but that's the thing is it's it's been a knock on Mario Pareca for a little while, and he stopped doing it. He stopped firing two-yard slants like it's a forty bomb. But when the game's close, it's because he when he floats it, he p- it's a pick. But on a slant, but, but he doesn't yeah. have the understanding. So like some th- some plays don't need to be thrown open; they're already open. Yeah. So like when it's it's just that's the case, you don't need to fire. I think it. this is one of those games where y- everybody was frustrated on Prospect <laughs> Squad. You score zero points. The yeah. game's sort of close, but you're not, you know, you're not winning. And then yeah. you brought in this guy who's I good, guess. but and. Tempers just flared because of the situation. Well, thanks to them, I finished my shift at eleven forty-five. Uh, <laughs> that's what matters. That's what matters most. Uh, bad boys, alcoholics. Great beat, game. Beat down. How was this a great Not game? Not really. <laughs> okay. So, um, alcoholics are a division three team, and they he wanted to put his team in division three. He just couldn't because his quarterback cap is too high. Paul Napier. Right? Paul Napier. Right? Right? Uh, Sean Kennedy showed up like fifty minutes into the game, so you know it was a little slow at that point. Um, they're just never up they just couldn't. They yeah. just couldn't. Yeah. But Alcoholics would have been a fun team in Division 3. They would have, yeah. I, I would have liked them a lot in Division 3 yep. for sure. But, you know, you know, I, I watched a score cap some of their games. Obviously, this team was talent deficient. And you're right. The three, they probably would have been a 6-1 team probably, if not uh, seven. If things Well, it depends. I mean, more, like... Yeah. Paul Appear can't throw in Division Three for a reason. Of course, right. Yeah, but right. if he Paul Appear is a good quarterback. Yeah, but with the we- the the weapons he has around him, they're not. They wouldn't have been I the most stacked team in three else. I understand, but he still would have been too good for the division. Up to next time. I mean, Sam Collins but, better than. But look at look. Yes. Of course he would. But look at their team. But look what happened. <laughs> He's with sixty. But look at this team. Yeah, though. sixty-four. Look at their team though. Okay, so you got Kennedy. Yep. You got Dom. Yep. You got uh, Ryan Perry. Yep. Paul. Yep. Mike Smith. Okay, I'm just saying those four guys. Like yeah. I like Mike Smith, but he's not a Division Two caliber. Those four guys are Division Two players. I yeah. would say, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe Kennedy a little yeah, less not, than the others. Yeah, but they're not. The Carl Denis, Carl Denis yeah. is a good recreational football player. Like he's he's I love playing like with him and against him. Yeah. Blue collar, blue collar type. I love that guy. Such but a even nice guy. four guys, they're not like the best. That's what I'm saying. On the they're team. secondary, if not third best players on the rest of the Div Two teams. Right. They're very good. Yeah. That's being kind. They're good yeah. pieces. They're, they're, they're very good Don players. Don Shepard's a very good piece. So where, do, where does but Ryan be your number one receiver? So who's the best receiver on Alcoholics? I don't Sean know Kennedy. who it is. Sean Kennedy probably. It'll be Don? Or so Don wasn't utilized in the way that Kevin Wyeth utilizes Don Shepard. So I would say Kennedy is yeah, probably the best receiver, right? Probably, yeah. When you so had Kevin Wyatt, he was using other guys, and Don was the third option yeah. that gets open because you're playing next to Patrick Rome. So Kennedy, where does he fit on, let's say, Clockmakers? Three or four. Okay. And he's uh, he's the number one receiver on uh, Alcoholics. Yeah, second or third. Yeah, yeah. second. second? Marco, yeah. Kyle. 
Yeah, but yeah. if, if you <laughs> and <laughs> Kerouac's <laughs> arguable, yeah. Kerouac, Kerouac, but Kerouac, Kerouac, arguable, yeah. Kerouac's better than. But yeah, that's I mean, what I'm saying. Like it's, yeah. it's the only one yeah. where you're close, but right? Put, yeah, maybe. If you yeah. put and if uh, I, I, I mean, anyway, I don't, it's just, it's I don't just tough for Paul, and I feel bad for him. Good on him making the yeah. playoffs and, yeah. and, and, and showing up every fucking week. Sure, and I, I, I've always and good on him for challenging himself too. Yeah, exactly. I'm not not gonna knock a guy for for. But it's doing like the best he can with the team around him. Absolutely. But it's also he was upset that he couldn't put his team in, and I think he's made a few comments on the whole Hall of Fame thing. Of and course. he's and he, and it sucks for Paul, who's Hall of Famer, respected in this league, and it sucks that he can't play with his buddies in the division that he should. And they're putting up all this money to not be able to fit in the division that, that they belong in. If that team, they that exact team, signs up for Division Three, and they're like they're not bringing in subs, and this is the team they're going to play with, they would have been. They wouldn't have been the best team in Division Three. No, they would have been very we, competitive. I think we talk about them beating half the teams that we just talked about in Division Three. Sure. Yep. Yeah. For would, sure. But it, they wouldn't like you put that team against the studs. I still think the studs is a favorite to win. Yeah. Well, right. the studs, again, it's sort of like but a not defensively a though. Defense. I think the studs defensively is a little weak. But, but yeah, well, I, I, see I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. All yeah, right, so let's dive into the playoff matchups now, boys. So wait, 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 wait. No, wait, wait, wait. Div one. Div one. <sighs> oh, what? It's okay, I got it, Eagle. Time. I yeah, got but it. he's going to set up the graphics. Oh, uh, okay, the graphics. We yeah, have the three seed deep. Well, no, wait, what are these? These are the Game? playoff previews? <laughs> no. <laughs> Games of the week. Games of the week. Games of the week. Yeah. No, previews, bro. Previews. Previews of Game the week. Previews. Previews. Uh, uh, previews. The three seed D boys take on the six seed Waste Ute. Great game. Okay, so can Dan Lazar, if you remember this game when they played each other in the regular season, called out Quazy Gordon Ball on the football field for not running his route. So can yeah. Lazar finally be on the same page with everyone in this very important game? So, uh, I, I again, I've said, one thing I've said all season is uh, I had this moment of clarity when I realized, oh, Dan Lazar is just the young Marco Messiotra. Like, that's what, like, I feel like this season, as the season's gone on, he's sort of chilled a little bit and we've seen a lot of patience from him that he hasn't shown before um so i think i think by this point everyone on that on waste youth is doing what they got to do and is on the same page okay. that answers your question yeah, and no, i think i think fun. he's reached a point where he now can communicate with it and not in a way where it's destructive or or it was destructive uh, last time last time yeah but i think i think that's not there anymore from what i've seen the last couple of weeks I think that all things considered, considering how the boys played this season and like their the potential future as a franchise, this is most likely their last shot at winning a championship. They need to make the most of it. They can't lose the round one the way yeah. suit. They need to right, like I'm not saying they need to make the finals, but losing to finest isn't the end of the world. Losing to the way suit is like a big knock. I guess and they regressed, and, and, and there's the a, the, I mean, there's a solid are. chance these guys are not coming back next season. Finest of the worst team in the playoffs right now. Yeah, but they like, but they lucked out though. Yeah, we'll but you're still playing. That. Like, I mean, you're still playing the finest. So, D boys can't afford to lose this one. I think they know, and I think they're going to show up big. And it's going to come down to can they stop TOJ from having seven touchdowns in the game? So, yeah. who has a bigger game, AJ Gomes or Jared Taylor? Jared. I mean, he spreads the ball to three players, right? Jared's going to have the bigger game. Jared, you think so? So you think the D-Boys are going to focus more on AJ than they would on Jared? I believe so. I think they would too. I think it's just because of the relationship he has with Marco yeah. and, you know, and just in general. But Jared is also the type of guy where if you put, let's say, Justin, Justin who we put against him once, manned up on him and he shut him down. Like, oh, yeah. Took him out of the game right away. This is last year. And uh, just on the first play, he threw a ball to Jared and Justin knocked it down and it threw him off completely the rest of the game. The so Jared is say, such a good receiver. I think man. D boys have the matchup across the board. I think so. And I think that if you look at it relatively, you know, you talk about pound for pound, best player, best fighters, things like that. Yeah. I think controversy is a pound for pound better team than Way Suit is. All right. Uh, oh, finds nice. DK. The four seed DK versus the <laughs> five you. seed Thank Montreal. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. Game, man. Thank you. All right. So did finest luck out to draw DK than Way Suit and D boys? Mm. See. Uh, normally, I would say yes because Finest always beats DK. This was the first time in nine games that DK beats Finest this season. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a also a good DK squad. It's a very good DK squad. It's pretty much always the same team. And it's the worst I understand I've ever seen. So what ritual did Rashti Ben Ablicator have to do <laughs> to <laughs> lift that curse? So it's, 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 it's look, this is the, the we'll see what all the best pieces the is unlifted, yeah. of DK they've built through the year. This is the, the rush they've built through the year playing against what we consider to be the, the weakest Finest team. I mean, the worst I mean, finest team Kevin ever White I've seen in since 2006. Kevin White yeah. not only didn't win the All Star, the the, the award, but didn't make All Star in day one. Yeah, 
right? So it's, it shows that this was a bad year for finance statistically and speaking. quiet, statistically speaking, also record speaking. Yeah. But so if they lose to DK twice in the same year, like it's a huge knock on finest too. Yeah. So this is like a prove it moment for DK against the finest. Mm -hmm. Beat them again because you are the better team this season. Don't piss the game away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the question is, can the speed of DK be far too much for the finest? Because I've seen some of the finest players fall flat on their faces oh, trying it, to chase down it guys. It needs to be, and it will be. It will be, absolutely. If I, uh, watching, watching Keyshawn play on offense is... Uh, <laughs> it's like a boxer. It hurts me. Yeah, it's like, it's uh, like because, a boxer, you know, he's you know? just getting there. He doesn't play as much anymore, so he's not as loose. Everything's a lot stiffer. Even the same thing with Kareem. Uh, a kid, you know, has great yes, hands. They're, they're getting older, man. They're like, getting older. But, it's, it's but, the lead, it. like but they're it's playing. But they're playing... A team that's just as old as them, if not, but that's just a lot more active. This reminds me of. Uh, well, are the pilons allowed to drink yet? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. They have uh, to. Be, you have to be this tall to, to, drink. to use an NBA in, uh, a angle. It reminds me of the Celtics in the '80s when they got cracked by the Detroit Pistons. Oh, okay, the Pistons yeah. got cracked by the Bulls, right? Yeah. You knew that was the end of their runs. Yeah. Because they just didn't have it anymore, right? Yeah, that's and true. this could be the the game where DK are the Bulls to the Pistons being uh, Montreal's finest. Yeah, I just true. think that like. The 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 finest have always added pieces um, to sort of keep them as young as they've always looked. And this season, they don't have those pieces. They went to Walmart instead of going to like Best Buy. To yeah, get they the brought in pieces that you're younger. Those pieces were just not the one piece. Yeah. Okay, well, so the thing. Like, so okay, so I'm looking at DK's roster. Okay, Hum, mm -hmm. arg arguably, well, arguably I top five I say player in the I say he's the best player in FPF. He's top all five. around, yeah. all around best yeah. player. He's top five, right? I mean, it doesn't again it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's parsing hairs. That's it. But, okay, but just, this, just, just, matter. So just got, to say, just to say, all got, of, right away. Yeah, yeah, no, they have a number one matchup. Absolutely, you got Nick. Then you have Serge. Yes. Then you have Tam. Yes. Then you have Matt Bond. Yeah. Shenard. Yeah. Alex Pilon. So the, your offense well, revolves around yeah. both Pilons and Nick Arsenault. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's Rajdi's offense. That's a three. Yeah. Right? So you know that man-to-man, -man, I mean, Arsenault wins matchups. And, and I'm filled that as a fourth option, by the way. Not awful. But no, he's not. <laughs> <it's laughs> you know I mean? Relatively good luck. But I don't know have. if Ham isn't wearing a jersey, but it says he only has played five games and he only has five catches this year. No, yeah, he, uh, he has the game. He, he, didn't, he didn't wear his number but for a few of the games. So, okay, that's what it is. So man-to-man okay. like, man -man coverage, Nick Arsenault wins. Yeah. But so does both Pilons. And yeah. when you start crossing these patterns around, the Pilons, Rajdi knows how to c play call properly. Matchups are there. And where these guys are going to be. It's basically DK's championship to win. It's the DK's to game lose. to win. When the yeah, it was the championship. We'll start with beat Finest, make it to the next round. This DK should win this game the same way D-Boys yeah. should win this game. Yeah, that's true. All right, Div 2. Here you go. Game. We have... No, it's the same thing. <laughs> we have... But what, 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 what are these? Previews of the week. <laughs> nice. uh, we have the one seed Braves 2.0 versus the four seed Bad Boys. Okay, so Bad Boys beat them 40 to 28 earlier yeah. this year. Uh, only loss, only blemish for uh, Braves 2.0. Uh, can Ryan Reedy have any sway in this game pass rushing Joe Mayo? <laughs> from okay. from the previous <laughs> few Just seasons, Joe Mayo doesn't seem to be faced by the rusher. Never. Div one, div two. It doesn't seem to bother him. I don't think Ryan Reedy is he's a good rusher, but he's not an impactful rusher the same way let's say Alex Pilon could be. Right? So I, I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think that matchup is going to determine the game. Okay, so uh, Pease, how do you square up against J.D. Chevalier, who's been a monster for Braves 2.0? It's difficult. Um, you got Nick um, That's what I'm saying. So bad boys are one of those teams that actually do have, you know, they have they have Pachinar, they have Nick Arsenal, they have... My bond. Matt Bond, Mitch Tua, they, they, there's there's good defensive players on this team. I don't think that's going to be the issue so much. I don't think it's going to be a perfect game from uh, Jean Tamer, but I think they'll just, in the end, it'll be hard to be as proficient and on offense for bad boys as as is the case for Braves 2.0. Uh, I agree. I think that it's going to come down to take your opportunity when bad boys switch to zone coverage and then you're yeah. able to beat them over the top sort of thing. Until because like Jean-Tamir is gonna be is gonna be patient. He has to be, but, but he will. Like that's it's what is, that's win. his game. He won't win consistently, and he knows that he's got some guys underneath. Like Jason Kurshine and Mike Pierre find ways underneath to always yeah. find the sweet spot. I'm still convinced that he doesn't give Mike Pierre routes, and Mike Pierre just does just whatever. Just finds his spot. Yeah. 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 Not free, for real. I'm convinced. He just freelances. Yeah. yeah, maybe. 
I think right. might be like he knows is. the concept and therefore knows yeah. where the hole should just, be. Just freelance yeah. to the right side and to the left side and figure it out. <laughs> All right, so Honestly. love him or hate him, is Pat Schneider a big time playoff quarterback? Uh, yeah, he, 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 he seems it, uh, like he's always he had a big time run there, there, right? Like he, he seems to be a terrible regular season quarterback yeah. at times. <laughs> at you know, times, yeah. like not obviously he's, he's a good quarterback, but like like you know the way he started the season and it, we've mm-hmm. seen he has games Coming where he just well he's always able but to. But it's never in the playoffs. In the playoffs, he's always always played well. Yeah. I just again, I just don't know if they have the ability to score as much as Braves two point He's been good the last five weeks. This is a good defense they're playing against. It's a All weird right. matchup, AC Mo. This is the only two teams you said can beat you. Can't sit with us. Yeah. So <laughs> next. So you're lucky because yeah, one, one of them is gonna be out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have the two seed hashtag NR versus the three seed Terror Squad. Okay, so NR won this game week one, 26-19. Our uh, I'm really excited for this matchup because it was really good uh, when I saw this happen before. Serge Pilon Jr. against Mike Asari matchup. Who do you like in this game? In that matchup alone, Asari versus Pilon Jr. Give him Serge. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to really. You think Serge? Give me Serge on both sides. If they play man to man the whole game. If it's not a home, the best player in the league, it's but, Serge. But the problem is the quarterback on one side is much better than the other one. Corey places the ball better than Tam does. I've seen Tam miss Pajerome. Wide open, yeah. Wide open, yeah. Like, so Corey won't miss those throws. So if it comes down to ball placement because it's like hip to hip, then Corey's gonna place it properly. Tam yeah. won't, and that's a big knock on Terra Squad. Is it's a strong team. But the quarterback play isn't up to par with Joe Myers or. And I think you're you're underestimating sort of the hashtag in our roster too. Like the hashtag in our roster across the board is very, very strong. It's very, very strong good. as well. Like I don't think there's yeah. sort of wa- like a single matchup like either side wins outright. Like it's they're good no, teams. They're both so. good teams. But it's gonna come down to like who could cover Pajerome in on hashtag in our properly like really. Mike Asai might be able to do it. Uh, I think Patrick but gets in his head real quick. But isn't he on Serge Pilon? Like he, he could be right. But if they, if they see, sorry, Terry. If, if, but if they see Pat Jones having a field day against Player X from yeah. the NR, they might flip him right and say, "Yeah, like, but then lock Sale's going to have a field day." To, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, the lesser I, two evils. Mike Asari so. is a great player. Man. He's a great yeah. lockdown yeah. corner. Unbelievable. Yeah, man, absolutely. But, yeah, but he he's also to go with he, he can also be very volatile. And Pat Jerome, Pat's good at is, is good at that. Just the little little jabs, you know, the little ones, the little ones. Yeah, I refer like back to spring 2015 in the finals when Rashawn Perry knocked the ball down against Pat Jerome. Next play, he goes to the huddle and you see him tell something to Kevin. Same play, boom, touchdown. Yeah, that's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's little like, things yeah, like do it that. again. Do yeah, it. Do yeah, it again. yeah, exactly the same play. Do it again, and he did it. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's just how Pat Jerome is, and he knows how to push buttons. And I think he's gonna get there. So just, but just don't react. Yeah, like but you that, know. it's really hard for. Yeah, some but that's guys, not man. what NR is, man. Yeah. NR is all it's about the emotional <laughs> playing the game. But that's how forward. they win their games too, which might, yep. it, which might be in their benefit, right? So if Tam Villadeth, who hasn't rushed much this year, I think 156 yards, if he rushes for 100 yards, it means Runs what? Rush for the like 100 yards? Yeah, he only rushed for 156 in the regular season. I think we could have a big game with Tam being more mobile than usual. So it means what though? If he rushes for 100 yards, for example, oh, Terrace wins for 100 yards. Yeah, Terrace yeah. wins. Yeah. Rush for 100 yards because it means it means that. There's less possessions in in the game. Yeah, that's like six runs too. It yeah. also means because in the red zone, I'm not too worried about Tam being able to use his receivers to their, to their strengths. But on a full field length, at some point he's gonna run out of place. If he's able to run the field every single time, because 100 yards is a lot of yards, man. Right. Yeah. They're, like if you're giving me 40, that's a different story. But 100, that's like he's running all over the place on key downs all the time. So no regard, eight game winning streak. Yeah. Uh, haven't been tested as much in the last eight weeks, two months of well, play. Well, that, that division was the weaker. Yeah. So yeah. can uh, can adversity in that regard be a big factor if they? Nah, they've been there before. Yeah, yeah, I don't think they're going to take it lightly. I think that every week I've seen Norgard play, they show up like it's a playoff game yeah. and they play with their hearts out. Yeah, I think this is Norgard's game to lose. They don't take weeks off, those guys. Because Corey Pecker is the better quarterback in the two. Right. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. Next, we have the one seed, Wiskawu, um, <laughs> versus the four seed, Clockmakers. <laughs> Would you call this it again? Uh, Wiskawu. Wiskawu against it's, Clockmakers. It's, if anything, so. it's Yuxwu. So Wix Wood defeated Clockmakers 39-38. <laughs> it won't be that close. That so will this be a close game at all? It won't be that close. Don't like any. You can sit with us by two scores. Two scores? I think that Alex Olawak is going to have is going to score 46 points or in that area. Keep in mind, Clockmakers defense last three games only gave him up 55 points. Yeah, I, I don't think that Matt correct as a rusher is going to have an impact on Alex Olawak because he takes deeper snaps now. Uh, they have the receivers to really... Shake things up for clock makers. They're going to move them around. Yes, it's a good defense, but I don't think they win matchups. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex Hallback has played 
incredible football since he's learned, hey, if I pick up the pace, it gives me the ability to call plays quickly, have it more difficult for the defense to adjust, and, you know, I have this huge repertoire of plays I can go to, and I've, like, a lot of these guys have played with him so long that he can just, like, rifle through plays quickly. Yeah, people know what you're going to go. His, uh, his pace... Is 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 sort of like with the war the Golden State Warriors did with the three pointer. Like it's it's changed sort of the math on the game. Yeah. So he he plays at such a highly efficient level and at such a like breakneck pace. It's going to be difficult for a team like Clockmakers who don't have necessarily the the same speed to match up with. You can't say with us cross board. So if if Yukusu loses mm-hmm. in this game. Uh, does Alex Hollock get the new nickname Alex the regular season? <laughs> no. Or the Alex Hollow season. Oh, wow. Hollow playoffs. If he, if he loses, he's going to lose with 35 plus points on the board. So How much see. is this going to hurt him if he loses this game? Because it's back to back quarterback of the years, right? In his, in his respective And it'll be a back to back bye and first round yeah. bounce. I think, honestly, I, it, it, it's Division 2. It comes down to the. Because mo- most teams are pretty much on par. Comes down to who's who's the better quarterback of the two teams. That's what they've won and they've two. Us, is. You know, lack over Kastner by a big margin. So yeah, to, uh, to us, it's uh, in the locker room. It's championship or bust at this point. You know, like we have nothing else to prove other than winning. Wait, you play for? Oh, that's right. Terry does play for. Them. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. rent a locker room somewhere? No, it's a chat. It's a right, chat. Okay. We call it right. the locker room. <laughs> no, no it, when they go to Rossard only. Oh, yeah. yeah. We only have one here. So I'm just saying it's championship or bust for us. Because or uh, like Papi, you know where they force you into locker I mean, like, it's a different... Like, if you Especially lose, the last five weeks. If you really don't lose this week, you lose next week in like, overtime. Eh, whatever. Well, I'll, I'll say right, this. Okay, that's fair. How do you get a shower in a chat room? Uh, it's hard. A lot of people's phones are get damaged. We figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say this. Um, Put it in rice, bro. If if we see it, perhaps we see uh, Alex Holloway against his former team, no regard in the finals, maybe. I uh, yes. str- I hope so, and I will. That would be fun. Yeah, because I'm not going to say anything now because we still have three games to play. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not there yet. Yeah. All right. But if uh, we get there, I really hope so. Next game. Last, Last game. game on the docket, the two seed STL versus the three seed controversy. Okay, so this was a crazy game last time. Uh, a lot of favorite games talking. It's going to be another crazy game. No Maybe love game. lost. Physical game. Down the zero was crying. STL said he's not a Hall of Famer yet. That's yet. the Ojea. Someone gets ejected in this game for OCs <laughs> between the whole mashup of Terrence Adams, Teo, Jamie, AJ, Dan. Somebody's going to get ejected okay, so for but, two OCs. But here's the thing, though. Aside from that argument, though, Dan Lazar, Dylan Taylor, they've both come up short in the playoffs. Terrence Adams uh, as Dan Lazar's number, man. Well, I mean, in the higher divisions, yeah. But Dylan Taylor has not performed well when, in the clutch moments, though. Well, didn't he? Didn't they beat two and a half downs like Division Three a few years ago? But at this yeah. point, though, at the highest level that he's played of football. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a lot tougher. They're going to be forced to go to A, but it's... Uh, They're going to A. Yeah, they have to. Uh, Dylan, yeah, Dylan, maybe he hasn't been as good as he needs to be, but he's been pretty good. I mean, I've... I've can't knock so him into playoffs. Do you, play do you trust him more than Dallas Aaron if five plays left and they're down by uh, five points to win? Against each other, yeah. like well, as I trust um, oh. Dylan over Dan. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, who do you trust, uh, Peasler? Well, I trust STL because they run a different style. Like he can throw it back to Theo. I trust STL over. Fair. I mean, look, I think you the, the the way you're trying to you're phrasing the question: Who's the better quarterback? Create controversy. Um, and the better quarterback so is Dan Lazare. I think the better quarterback is Dan Lazare. The team construct, STL probably gets the edge because of the versatility. Yeah. I don't think the top end talent's very different. No, I agree. Uh, I think that STL has different things they can do where controversy, you know what you're getting. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and just what it comes down to is in the end is can, contra- can controversy execute even though you know what they're doing, yeah. which they're very good at, mm-hmm. and can STL throw in a wrinkle that controversy doesn't expect, which they're very good, good at. Good point. Um, and I think... I th- Think I'm gonna go with ex- execution on this one. I think controversy. Uh, are we doing picks? No, not yet. All right, I don't know then. Okay, stop I talking. I couldn't say anything. Let's do picks. I think that <laughs> if you bring down STL against controversy, the problem. I score kept third game in the regular season this year. Yeah, and STL we were all there. I think. Really yeah. Yeah. Too. STL really got into controversy skin. Well, the board. Dan Lazar skin. Yeah, but also you could see players on controversy were also frustrated, and. I, I just think that Lazar needs to focus on 
what's going but on in the game. But he, he actually made a comeback that game because they were getting yeah. killed. Yeah. But he won't. Cause but he Terrence did. Terrence is going to get under his skin because Terrence knows. So you know what you do if you're Lazara? Sacking him, it doesn't matter. You know Getting what you do if you're Lazara? Yeah. You, you throw, throw the ball directly at his face. Yeah. yeah no but, joke. Yeah, but if he's going to be dirty and yeah, the refs aren't going to call that, it, yeah, but you th- throw the ball directly at his face. Well, now there's three referees, right? There's three refs. So if you do that, to doesn't be matter. clear, no. the media does not condone throwing a ball yeah. in someone's face. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 if we do. I was we do. Dan no, you Lazara. Do you do that exact same play, quarterback gets ejected. 100%. No. It's happened before. It's going to yes, be it a, happened it's before. a pass deflection. He got, he it's happened before. He got <laughs> ejected from the No, uh, Dan did that. Dan did that. Also, Jimmo Springer did that. Dan did that a while back, and he got ejected. You will get kicked out of the game if you do it intentionally. And Dan, I don't think Dan's a good enough flyer to make it to look get away like, with it, yeah. oh, I did it on purpose. You look, should, should get, get Khalil to just kind of button hook. So Khalil, if, whoever if, it is, if you're Terrence down. Adams, in the end, and you, you what we're saying is, Dan, chill. Yes. I live two blocks away. Come over for a beer. Calm down. Yes. <laughs> we'll be good. That's what it needs to be. Dan needs to let all that happens on the field not get them. Yes. Yeah. STL's game plan is... Get onto Dan Lazaro's skin, yeah. and it's not just them. Throw Everyone dimes. does it. Like, we yeah. were doing, we were doing this to Dan in Div Five. We were yeah. doing this to Dan in Div yeah. Three. Like he hated games against Moose back in the day, just because all we would do is try to eject his players. Yep. That's all we would do. So, so that, that's, that's what SCL is going to do, and they found a way now to sort of get away with saying stupid shit on the field. Yeah, and yeah. Right? Like, have you seen Theo play recently? He puts like the 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 banana over his mouth so people don't. So the, the refs LeBron effect. So the re- the refs don't That's see not talk. why he does it. Well, he talks on the field and the refs don't know where the foul is coming from, so nobody gets fouled. He still talks when the bandana is not on his face. So I oh, he still talks. Yeah. So the question it's is, okay. does D- does Dan have the DNA makeup to keep us cool and not? I think he does. We've seen it. It's just that it's more times, more often than not, where he gets upset. Yeah. All right. Is now I time think for and if he's watching this, yeah, he's probably he, upset. Yeah, but he gets upset. He gets upset. Dan, ready for the conversation till three in the morning. <laughs> Dan, the Raptors are shit. Game <laughs> Yanni, of the week. Yanni is right, gonna win MVP over Harden. Why do you mispronounce his name? It's Giannis. It's Yanni. Stop. Because I'm Greek. Yeah, that's not real language. All right. It's you gonna name him? Uh, you go? That was it. There like eight people speak Greek. Braves <laughs> versus <laughs> Braves 2.0. Bad boy. Are you doing it? Yeah. Braves 2.0. Everyone bad boy. Braves. Yeah. Braves. STL controversy. STL. Mm, controversy, but I don't like it. STL. The close one. Very close one. Overtime. Yeah, it's going to always it's gonna be close. It's going to be close for sure. It's gonna be overtime. overtime. I, I, I'm, abs- I'm actually upset that I'm playing an hour later at another field. No, on the same, same field. Boom. I'm going to watch it. Uh, NR Terror Squad. Hashtag NR. Yeah. Yeah, NR. 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 Uh, you can't sit with us and clock me. You can't sit with us. You can't sit with us. All the favorites move on. Yep. You can swoop. <laughs> no. Controversy. That's the one. That's the one underdog. Okay, let's go to Div okay. 1. Liar. Look here. DK. DK finest. And we talked about it. DK. I said, I said DK needs to win. Yeah. DK is going to... Uh, needs to win. They're going to put the last nail in the coffin of the finest. Mm-hmm. And the finest over? No more Montreal's finest? Or no, are they going to be back. 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 They'll be back, but I think Stop. Kevin Wyeth will have more of an influence on the rosters. So I, I think he's starting to have an influence on the roster. I think, I I, I think they personally. didn't ask him. I think they didn't <laughs> ask you? him. He's affected uh, my roster. He's, he's affected affected on the my roster. <laughs> Show me yeah, on the bottle where he's touched you. you know Kevin Wyeth has affected my roster. Toss up. Do they ask Mo Kahnbach? Bok 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 Put the accent on the wrong syllable <laughs> Absolutely not No they, they, I don't think they I'll was be honest your, Was your ability to use the language broken? Broken, broken. But I don't think they did ask him for this this roster that they have I think he didn't care Things like whatever No so but, what but, what happened was But the FPF All-Star team he had in, in the Fall Cup was a far so more talented team What happened What happened this year with the finest was that uh, Kevin wasn't asked He wasn't told that they were missing players so he would have went and gotten a Justin sure. McLean instead of gone into D-Boys. He would have gotten a – or he asked Chris, but Chris said no. He would have gotten other players, but he didn't know that we were missing player, that they were missing players. So Keyshawn said that he's fielding the team. So I don't know. But that's what I'm saying, though. They should have asked them. Yeah, of course. Because Kevin is able to they, recruit a lot better than a lot of other people. It was a constructed well, roster. Course. It's what it is. Hey, you want to play with Kevin? Yes? Okay. 100%. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Next. You guys all took DK. Yeah. Uh, D-Boys, Waste Youth. D-Boys. I'm going to go D Boys. D Boys. The yeah. same D-boys. reason. This is well, v- slightly different. This is one of like D Boys' last. I think it's their last winter. Might be their last season. If they come back, they might come back next winter. But Kirk's getting too pregnant. Braves and TBA. What? No, that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> Braves, clean sweep. Three guys off. All right, magic words, please. Uh, the best sleeper since Bill Cosby is. I don't know. Cardi P. Hey. Cardi P. 
Because okay. of drugging people. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Good night, Michigan. You're about to lose to Texas Tech. Nice, I got Texas Tech. <laughs>